the Charisma Salon and uh, getting ready, doing our makeup. Well, Most of us yeah, are going to put our dresses on. Wonder. We're going to head over to Cedar Springs Pavilion for pictures around 3 o'clock. And uh, getting married today. 5.30 if I don't run beforehand. My sister is in from out of town. Marcy, so I'm very excited about that. Haven't seen her in, gosh, two years. Has it only been two years? I thought it was longer yeah, than that. Been two years longer. Yeah, yeah. Too long still. Felt like forever. So Lisa, my sister, um, I am so happy for you. You have um, made an awesome choice in the man that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. You have persevered and you have um, taken care of your kids and yourself first and you have made sure that you've accomplished what you want to accomplish and you've done right by making the search for your soulmate. You and Aaron are just going to make such great memories and I love you and I will love you always. Lisa, it's finally September 5th 2014 uh, what seems like yesterday just making that uh, that website or actually even asking the question heck to be honest with you just yesterday it seems like we were just friends hanging out uh, driving to Fort Wayne Indiana to get shoes um, I've you know been filled with more happiness in the last four years than I think one man gets in a lifetime and that's that's awesome and I hope to uh, Hope to return the favor and uh, you know bless you and bless us and bless the kids and the family and and hopefully uh, you know pass on some of that happiness that you've given me. Dark. Yeah, all right. Dope, right? Dope, right? Y'all want to know what time it is? Time's too late to run. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go get that. Go get that shit. Go get that. Kiss your dad. <laughs> Go, Superman. <laughs> I was going to leave. You look, you should leave. Come by CBS. Let me fix this real quick. Yes. There you go. <laughs> You're such a dork. Yeah. <laughs> you look amazing, too, by the way. <laughs> when did Not you square that boy. out of the way? <laughs> this is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. As we come together, family and friends, in this beautiful place, we truly rejoice for the love of Aaron and Lisa share. Love for each other and for God. We're all here today because Aaron and Lisa want you all included in this very important event, a celebration of joining of their lives together in marriage. Witnessing as they promise to face the future together as one. <laughs> Parents, are you willing now and always to support this marriage and strengthen it by upholding both Aaron and Lisa with your love and concern. Let us pray. Dear God, we gather here to rejoice and share in your plan to bring Aaron and Lisa together, to become one in marriage 
and one in you. We ask, Lord, that you help them always remember this commitment, never putting the love for worldly treasure or pursuits before you or each other. Help them, Father, to keep them, their love fresh and renewed. Most importantly, draw them close and guide them in keeping you first in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lisa and Aaron, the Bible tells us God created love and marriage. In 1 John 4, 19, it says we love because he first loved us. Mark 10, 6 says, at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. The two will become one flesh. So they're no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Marriage brings oneness from love created and demonstrated by God. Marriage is a relationship of one man, one woman, freely and totally committed to each other in love. Marriage is a holy union, a precious relationship that needs tender self-sacrificing care. We should use our unique gifts to strengthen our marriage and to glorify God. 1 Corinthians tells us about love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of the wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Aaron and Lisa, love involves action. It should guide your behavior towards each other. 1 John 3.18 encourages us not to love with words or tongue, but with action and in truth. Our love for God can be measured on how well we treat others. Love never demands rights or privileges. Love thinks of the other person first, it seeks the other person's welfare. It's thoughtful for the other's feelings. Love never offends by actions or words that are violent or foul. Love guides you to restrain anger and temper and have patience with the other. Love is truthful, not hurtful. It does not knock down others in order to lift oneself up. True love is not possessive or jealous. It is liberating. It sets you free to become your best self. It makes you want the same for the one you love. And to him, and to help them achieve it. Love makes you stronger. It supports you so you can reach out and become involved with life in ways you not, dare not risk alone. Love makes burdens lighter because you divide them. It makes joys intense because you share it. It uplifts both of you. Love has an attitude of thankfulness to God in all things. According to Hebrews, marriage is to be held in honor among all. Honor means in high respect, high public esteem, honesty, fairness, integrity, and one's beliefs and action. In marriage, the two must honor one another, and we must respect them for their commitment to one another. And in no way stand between or try to separate them. Family and friends, are you willing now and always to support this marriage and strengthen it by upholding both Lisa and Aaron with your love and concern? We are. Aaron and Lisa, the scripture gives wonderful direction for husbands and wives. In first John, or in John 15, 12, Jesus loved, Jesus says, love each other as I have loved you. Galatians 5.13 directs us to serve one another in love. God shows us a way for a man and woman, husband and wife to work together. Ephesians 5.21 says submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Submitting to another person is a concept often misunderstood. Christ at whose name every knee should bow 
in heaven or on earth and under the earth. He submitted his will to his Father, and we honor Christ by following his example. Wives are instructed to submit to their husbands as the Lord's Lord, but submission does not mean losing yourself to please another. Instead, it means caring for the other as you care for yourself, learning to anticipate his or her needs, and to serve them, just as Christ served the disciples, even to the point of washing their feet. Submission involves mutual commitment and cooperation. Ephesians 5 also tells the husbands to love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. How then should a man love his wife? He should make her well-being his priority. He should care for her as he cares for his own body. With humility, gentleness, and patience, he should be willing to sacrifice for her. The union of a husband and a wife merge two people in such a way that little can affect one without affecting the other. Proverbs 12.4 states that a wife of noble character is her husband's crown. Proverbs 31 further defines a wife of noble character. She fears God, is hard worker, is compassionate, concerned for the poor, and shows wisdom in handling money. She's clothed with strength and dignity, and to her husband, is worth far more than rubies. He has full confidence in her. In the Lord, the woman is not independent of the man, nor is the man independent of the woman. Aaron, are you ready to commit your life to Lisa, loving her and sacrificing her, reflecting the love and sacrifice of Christ for you when he went to the cross? I am. Lisa, are you ready to commit your life to Aaron loving him and sacrificing for him, reflecting the love and sacrifice of Christ for you when he went to the cross. I am. At this point, Aaron, you recite your vows. <clears throat> couple of sentences. couple of sentences. Lisa, uh, the book of Isaiah reads, Those that wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings of eagles. That's. You like it? I think it's just for the videographer. I don't oh, think it has anything to do with the thing. But, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The female eagle will drop sticks from high altitudes and make the male chase it. And earning his trust, her trust, sounds familiar. Friend card. For many years, eagles have been the symbol of beauty, bravery, courage, honor, pride, determination, and grace. All adjectives I would use to describe you. Once they have built the trust, they are together for life. Not just through good times, but also through the bad. Eagles are the only bird that love the storm. All other birds flee from the storm when the eagle takes it head on. I will take the storm head on with you even when the Broncos may beat the Raiders. <laughs> may beat the Raiders. The male and female work the nest together, as I am looking forward to working the nest together. Like the eagle, we will be leader to our children. The eagles are great creatures because God made them that way. My vow today is to continue our love triangle growing closer to God so that we may mount up like eagles and be a symbol not just to our family, but our community and our friends. Here comes the novel. <laughs> <clears throat> About four years ago, I opened up a book and really saw God for the first time. No, it was not the Bible, it was quantum physics. <laughs> so it only makes sense that the same God who revealed himself to me through science would then show me this very independent, happily, happily single woman, his love through a man. Who says God doesn't have a sense of humor? Time and time again, you have amazed me with your unselfish, random acts of kindness. When I had to cram for a test and didn't have time to do yard work, you snuck over with a ladder and a bucket and cleaned out my gutters. When I was short on money and too proud to ask for help, 
you snuck money in my wallet. Just sweat. I sweat. We're fine. <laughs> You always, you always carry Rolaids because I have heartburn. And in winter time, I would always come home to a salted walkway. And when I said I wasn't sure that I'd want to be married, he patiently waited. Now I know love. So, today I vow to seek God first in our marriage and treat you with the same mercy he gives me every day. I will not hold you to an unrealistic perfection, but will practice forgiveness and acceptance. I will give even when I don't get and I will choose to love you even when I don't feel loved. But most importantly, when Denver wins against Oakland <laughs> and I crush you in fantasy points, I promise to always rub it in your face with gracefulness and tact. <laughs> These rings are a symbol of your love and commitment to one another. The unending circle symbolizes the vows you must you have just taken. Everlasting, unending in God's eyes as well as a bond of trust between you two. Aaron, as you place this ring on Lisa's finger, repeat after me. Lisa, I love and trust you. Lisa, I love and trust you. That all, all that I have. All that I have. And all that I am. All that I am. I offer to you now joyfully. I offer to you now joyfully. I will honor and remain faithful to you. I will honor and remain faithful to you. All the days of my life. All the days to my life. Lisa, as you place a ring on Aaron's finger, repeat after me. Aaron, I love and trust you. Aaron, I love and trust you. All that I have and all that I am. All that I have and all that I am. I offer you now joyfully. I offer you now joyfully. I will honor and remain faithful to you. I will honor and remain faithful to you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. May this marriage continue in the Lord Jesus Christ, and may you put him in your lives daily. May you also share with each other the gift of love, be one in heart, faithful and strong in every trial. May the home you create together always be a place of comfort and safety, filled with love, generosity, and kindness. Aaron and Lisa, you are no longer two persons independent of the other, but now forever united. So by the power vested in me by the state of Ohio, in the presence of God, I, pronounce, I now pronounce you husband and wife, what God has joined together, let no man separate. We, we, know the <coughs> we know of Lisa's love and study of rocks. We know of how Aaron and Lisa love God and believe that he is the rock of our salvation. With Christ being the cornerstone and foundation of our faith, it is fitting then that their acts as man and wife, even before the traditional kiss, is sharing a unity ceremony, a rock ceremony, symbolizing two different lives from one, two different families, now joined together along with Isaac and Zoe, with Jesus as the cornerstone, around which they will build their lives. Can we take the Sharpies? Bam. 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 I got it. Here, you guys have to share them. <laughs> Got it. Done with them? Can't get the top. <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you asking if I'm done with them? I think so. Aaron, you may now kiss your beautiful bride. <laughs> Did you stick your finger out? <laughs>
Family and friends, it is my pleasure and great privilege to present to you Aaron and Lisa Stewart. I love you because you treat me like a lady and I love you because you always put me first. I love you because you waited. Um, I can't wait to spend my life with you and to uh, give back to you what you've given to me and always put God first in our marriage um, so that we are, are always united and always um, have the same vision in mind. I love your family. Your family is fantastic and your friends, everything about you, the people that you choose to be with are all positive and loving and that shows a lot about your character as well. You are the most generous person I've ever met. Always giving. I've never met anybody like you. say is I remember the day that uh, when Aaron texted me and said that the girl of his dream said yes to marry him. And for me it is an honor and a privilege to be standing up here not only as a best man but as a part of your family and your family of the past and your family of the future who is sitting right here with us. Yeah. Um, let's raise our glasses to Lisa and Aaron and the family that begins today. To you too.
I love you, Mom, and I hope that I just hope that this will be the best day that you could possibly have and remember. I love Aaron, and he's he couldn't. I couldn't ask for a better dad, and I couldn't ask for a better man in my life than him. And I love you, and thank you for everything.